G'day there. Today we're going to have a look at try and, trying to make some cardboard reinforced plastic. So in an upcoming video I want to try and take some of these neodymium magnets and heat them up in the oven until they're at curie temperature and then try re-magnetizing them as they cool down via an electromagnetic coil. Um, I will be trying it with these ferrite cores that they fit inside quite nicely. I also wanted to try it with some non-magnetic, non-electrical um, cores. So I need something to wrap, wrap my wire around so that I can run an electromagnet on these soon to be not magnets and not have any electrical and magnetic interference taking place. And it also needs to be able to withstand a bit of decent temperature. I'd like to heat them up to 150 or 200 degrees Celsius. So I came up with this. I've got some little strips of cardboard box cereal um, cereal box cardboard. You can use a variety of different things, I'd imagine. And I've rolled them into little strips and glued them, cut them into strips, rolled it around into cylinders, and glued it together with a dollop of super glue. I've then got my little icy pole stick or popsicle stick, as I believe you call them in America, and I've hung with some thread, just a bit of cotton thread, the little tubes and they can sit in this cup to dry. And I've also placed a bit of paper towel in the bottom of the cup in case there's a significant amount of epoxy resin dripping it can generate some heat and it doesn't always get along with other plastics until it's while well, it's in its liquid state. Sometimes it can actually have a melting reaction with the other plastics uh, um, like a thinner. Um, so some of the stuff you're going to need for this obviously the string, some cardboard, Epoxy resin. I've carefully read the um, instructions on this cheapo $2.50 packet of epoxy, which I got a few of. And one of the first things it says is that you need to sit the epoxy up that way to allow for air bubbles to get to the tops of the tubes. So that's been there for a while. Um, this stuff sets reasonably quick. It says four to six minutes on the front of the packet. That's um, a bit of a lie. If you read the back, it says you can. It does say setting time of 4 to 6 minutes, item can be handled in 30 minutes, full strength attained after 16 hours, which is about typical for epoxy resin. So these are going to have to sit here for at least half an hour, probably a bit longer before they're even going to be able to be touched. And something else you're going to need, something to mix your resin in, and it helps to have a few pokers of some sort, you can use bits of wooden stick or bits of plastic stick, plastic sticks probably not advisable. It doesn't really matter as long as it's disposable because it's going to get coated in epoxy and you're going to want to throw it away when you're done. I also have a big roll of paper towel for clean up because you never know this stuff can be really messy and it pays to be prepared. That's also why we're working on the pizza box. If I have any drips I can just throw the pizza box out, it won't ruin my table. Um, I've got a few extra squares of paper towel around just in case. These are actually full squares to fold it up, ready to go, in case there's a spill or I need to do some sort of cleanup. So, let's get moving. I'm going to snip the top off the epoxy. I should check my snippers fit. That would have helped. Need bigger snippers. There we go. Just works. So we're going to squeeze a generous amount of epoxy in here, this stuff's pretty cheap. And I don't mind when I was supposed to get those air bubbles out before I started squeezing so that the amounts come out evenly. So we're going to have to wait for a sec, that would go. And for some reason that doesn't want to squeeze. This is where things get nasty if it slips and squirts out suddenly. Hmm. Yeah. Instructions didn't say anything about that guy. That would make things easier. There we go, now it's working. Alright, so you can squeeze air epoxy out. Equal parts, part A and part B. 
As I said, this stuff's pretty cheap. I'm going to use a lot and I'm going to waste a lot. Because I want to be able to do this. Immerse those cardboard tubes pretty easily. There we go, that'll do. That should be able to get me immersed. And I'll sit this up this way. Until these parts mix, they don't go off. So that's fine to use again on a later day. As long as I keep it so it doesn't leak. Now, I have made four of these little tubes up, but I'm only planning to do three. So I have a spare. It all goes bad. So that's this one. Oh, and of course we need to mix that resin. Very thoroughly. Very important to mix your resin well. And also, it's also very important to do this in a well-ventilated area. I have lots of doors and windows open and a fan on, keeping the air circulating in this room. This does smell a lot and the fumes are not very good for you. I'm pretty confident that's well mixed now. A few air bubbles isn't going to do me too much harm. It's a little thicker in consistency than I'd really like for this project, but I think we'll be alright. Alright, so... so... That's my spare. That was the least favourite of my cardboard tubes, and I'm going to grab a fresh nail. So here's the pointy end. I'm just going to slip my nail in there so I can push it down into the resin, roll it around, make sure it gets a good coating on it. Hopefully that cardboard will soak up the epoxy, that's the intent of this experiment. Oops. That's going to drip a bit, which is why we've got our cup and our pizza box and all the rest of this stuff to be prepared for the dripping. There we go. And hang it over the cup to dry. I'm also kind of curious how that paper towel in the bottom of the cup is going to soak up the epoxy. I've been wanting to try this for some time. Reinforcing epoxy um, paper and epoxy together. So let's go again. That's a bit better. You do have to work pretty quickly with this stuff. It says on the box four to six minutes curing time, so you've got about that long to work on it. Make sure I get some down in the middle. If I get a bit too much down in the middle, I can always drill it out later. That's not a big problem. sticks so that you can set, so they can set without bumping into other things. I'm also going to try and rearrange this one. This cotton. I don't think I'm going to have too much luck there. That's already starting to go quite tacky on that one. I'd like to get it hanging. More like the first one, but no, I don't think I'm going to have any luck with that. It's too sticky on the cotton. Alright, let's try this last one, and we'll make sure it's hanging on the cotton the way I want this time, which is more like that. Alright, then, like that, where it's going to fill up half the inside when it sets. I want it to drip out and drain. making sure my hole is open at the loop in the top. I've just about run out of working time here. Yeah, this is, I think I've run out of working time. And we're actually getting some smoke here. Something is burning because this is so hot. I think my plastic container is burning because I put too much epoxy in it. 
But that's it, I'm out of time, and that is definitely smoking or steaming or something. I'm just going to pull that out and throw it on that bit of paper towel there. I might be able to use that container again. Well, well this is why it helps to have extra paper towel handy. I've had an accident, it's stuck to me. There we go. That's that off, I'll try and use that. Well form again. Uh, quickly, while we've still got time, let's just squirt out a bit more. Won't use so much this time, that was a total overkill. Uh, grab my mixing nail, yep, this container is very warm. She's going to increase the speed of the setting this reaction with the epoxy with the part A and the part B does generate heat. So now that it's I'm using a hot container I've got a lot less time to work than the first time around so I'm definitely only going to get one out of this. And that's alright, that's all we need. Uh, there we go, that's up the right way. Get that in there. Nice coating on it, I'm trying to get some on the inside. Bring it through with the nail. Definitely got a good coating around the outside of the cardboard. The nail's starting to get stuck inside already. I seem to have contaminated my mix with the human hair, which isn't fun. But anyway, let's see if we can get the hair away. There we go. And can we straighten it up? I'm grabbing a new pointer. New poker. Is this going to want to let us straighten it up so that it can drip better? This is very fiddly stuff. There we go. Now, how do I get it off? This is where having lots and lots of pointers really does come in handy. That is getting really tacky. Oh, don't stick to the pizza box. If I have an epoxy of the loop closed in my string. Right, there we go. Set that there to hang. Don't see it stuck to my cup. Yeah, big stringy bits. And I can see that big dangly bits. I'll be able to trim that up later. pretty close together. It's stuck to the cup again. Definitely going to have to rethink that cup. Maybe. There we go. We've got three of them sitting in there hanging. And I'm going to let them sit for a few hours to dry. And then we'll be back to try and make some magma coils. Thanks for watching.